Hello and welcome to the Killick and Co Market Update. This week, the latest inflation data for the UK has been published and the headline number for CPI or the Consumer Price Index came in at just 0.3% and that is far below the Bank of England's target rate of 2%. Low inflation can be an indicator of low demand in the economy, which is not so surprising at the moment when people are feeling cautious, they're worried about the future of the economy and are worried about future unemployment. So it's not surprising that some people are holding back on spending. But another factor is certainly that we have not been able to spend money on things that we used to spend money on. Let's take a look at the latest data for the household savings ratio. This is defined as the percentage of UK disposable income that is not being spent. Here's the data going all the way back to 1963. And as you can see, the rate tends to fluctuate between about 5 and 15%. And it tends to rise after a period of economic difficulty. For example, you can see that it rose after the stock market crash of 1987, after the dot-com bubble burst in 2000, and again after the financial crisis in 2007. But this year, the savings ratio has gone all the way up to over 29%. And that is largely because a lot of the things that we used to spend spend money on like travel, restaurants, leisure have not been possible during lockdown and that has forced many of us to become savers. We can also look at a breakdown of the constituents that go into that inflation number and we can see exactly what components have been rising and falling in price. So here's a chart showing a breakdown of some of these components. And as you can see, the price of communications has actually gone up over the last year, probably because there's been more demand while we've been in lockdown. You can also see that the price of clothes has fallen quite heavily, and that's probably because some retailers have had to discount quite heavily to get rid of excess stock. I think it's almost certain that this high savings ratio is a factor in the low inflation rate, but it will be interesting to see what happens next year as the vaccine is rolled out and people are allowed to go out once more. Apps that offer trading on a so-called commission-free basis have become very popular this year. With live sports not really happening, it's thought that many people who used to gamble on live sports have turned instead to gambling on the stock market. One source predicts that up to 25% of trades that have taken place on the stock market this year have been placed by retail investors, and that compares to about 10% in the year 2019. Perhaps that's one reason why there's been so much volatility in the share prices of well-known brands such as Tesla. One of the most popular free-to-trade apps is Robinhood, which launched in 2013 and now has over 13 million clients, over 3 million of whom only joined the app in the first quarter of this year. So if there's no dealing commission, how do these apps make money? Well, when Robinhood receives an order, it sells that order on to a market maker who is keen to execute that trade. Bearing in mind that market makers make money on the spread between the buy and sell price of a stock, it's hard to believe that Robinhood clients are getting the best prices for their orders. And in fact, on Thursday this week, Robinhood announced that it's just paid a $65 million settlement to the SEC for achieving poor prices for its clients' orders. And then on Wednesday this week, the regulator for the state of Massachusetts announced that it is suing Robinhood for gamifying investing, for encouraging beginner investors to gamble on the stock market, and for not doing enough to protect these investors. And that's bearing in mind that about half of Robinhood's clients are first-time investors. This lawsuit could have real implications for other trading apps, so we'll be watching the situation very closely to see how it turns out. And finally, this is the last video for this year, so let's take a look at the market performance over the last 12 months. As usual, this chart is indexed, so it shows the percentage return in the S&P 500 in the green and the FTSE 100 in the pink over the last 12 months. As you can see, the S&P 500 is up over 15%, whereas the FTSE 100 is down over 13%. Both indices are actually up over the course of this week, following some positive commentary from the Federal Reserve over in the US. The central bank has emphasized that it will be keeping interest rates lower for longer, and that has helped to support markets. There's also been some positive commentary regarding both the Brexit negotiations and the negotiations regarding a stimulus deal over in the US. So it has been a difficult year, but things are starting to look up. We wish you all a very happy Christmas and a happy new year, and we look forward to seeing you all in 2021.